Raleigh Cigarette Program, starring Red Skelton with David Forrester and his orchestra, our singing star Anita Ellis, Gigi Pearson, Verna Felton, Pat McGeehan, and back from the CBI, our guest, Wonderful Smith, and yours truly, Rod O'Connor. <laughs> It's a pleasure to bring you Metro Golden Mayor's popular comedian and the star of the Raleigh Cigarette Program, Red Skelton. Thank you, thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Al Spring is here, you know. Yeah. Everyone's glad Spring's here, too. I was over at Griffith Park this afternoon, and even the benches applauded. <laughs> Hope heard that. Oh, oh, be, oh, that'll burn him up. <laughs> well, Red, what have you been up to this week? Oh, I've been up to my neck. There's a mud puddle outside my door, you know. <laughs> now, I haven't been doing much of anything. Santa Anita is close. Uh, I've joined the 100,000 of homeless people, you know. <laughs> well, what are the people doing that used to bet at Santa Anita? Well, the people that only bet on the sure things are now betting on pedestrians crossing the street. <laughs> They'll give you six to one that you can't cross against the red light. How about the green light? <laughs> That's 20 to one. <laughs> oh, that Griffith Park joke. I love that. There it is. Oh, Bob Hope! <laughs> yes, sir, it's really spring. <laughs> I know it's spring. I went by Griffith Park this morning. My benches were applauding. <laughs> I'll try next door. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, Bob, why don't you try the four frost warnings? They come on next. <laughs> Oh, there's a great guy. After all these years, I've been following hope. They say after there's no more hope, then comes Skelton. <laughs> oh, say, Red, yeah. man, did you see the write-up you have in Screenland Movie Magazine? Oh, yeah. They got a color picture of you in there. It's really something. Oh, well, don't let that picture fool you. know, down deep inside, I'm not healthy at all. In fact, I took off my shirt, and I was hissed out of the white MCA. <laughs> <laughs> The Cub Scouts were in training, man. <laughs> well, why don't you see a good doctor? Yeah, I did. He's very modern. He don't say stick out your tongue. He just shows you his bill and it falls out. <laughs> well, what does the doctor charge? Oh, $1,000 a visit. Does anyone pay it? No, but he just likes to see their tongues fall out. <laughs> well, what did the doctor say is wrong? Well, he said I had a falling stomach. Of course, I didn't believe him until I tripped over it going out the door. <laughs> Well, you know, the best way to find out if you're really healthy is to try and buy life insurance. I did. No soap, no life. <laughs> well, oh. David. Ah, oh, good evening, friends and the world listening. <laughs> <laughs> David, the way you read clean lines is a dirty shame. <laughs> Uh, the other programs I've worked on never complain. Oh, you've been on other shows? <laughs> yes, but the part wasn't very big. I was Ma Perkins' husband. Oh. <laughs> He's a talent scout for a morgue if I ever saw one. <laughs> medical science can give you proof positive. <laughs> By the way, have you tried for any life insurance lately, David? Uh, yes, they sold me some, but it's rather embarrassing. How come? Every time they see me, they try to pay me off. <laughs> some insurance is ridiculous. The same guy don't write for you that writes for Hope, does he? <laughs> That's so ridiculous. No, I didn't think so either, the way you stood over there to read that line. <laughs> well, say, do you know how many people were killed last year in bathtubs alone? Well, how else can you take a bath? <laughs> you know, I have a good policy. You pay two cents a week, and I get $50,000 if I'm ever killed by a, crossing, a baby crossing the street. <laughs> And if it's at noon and I'm wearing yellow socks, it pays double. <laughs> and now our lovely Anita Ellis will sing all through the day. I sit alone in the golden daylight. But all I see is a 
silver sky. For in my fancy I sweep away life and keep my image of the sky. Skelton's scrapbook of satire is entitled Newspaper. Our characters are fictional. If there's any similarity to persons living, it's not only a coincidence, it's a dirty shame. <laughs> Chapter 105 is the story of Dead Eye, and a Western newspaper that's trying to clean up a city of crime. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Oh, come on, horse boy! Oh, come on and stop, will you? I got some sugar in my pocket. If you'll stop now, I'll give you a lump. Oh, now we both got a lump. I'll be right back, old pal. I'm going into this bar here and grab myself a bit of free lunch. Well, uh, bartender, I don't care much for this free lunch. I got something stuck between my two front teeth. Can't get it out. You don't have a toothpicky, do you? No. Nope. Don't have a piece of string or spaghetti I could use, have you? No. Nope. Well, then there's only one thing to do. <laughs> don't know where there's a good dentist, do you? <laughs> I just found a little cavity up here. Well, then I... Well, wonderful Smith. How are you? Oh, you sure look good. You look like a handsome cowboy movie star. Yeah, did you ever see one of them cowboy movie stars? Nope, that's what I mean. You look like something I ain't never seen. <laughs> I hear you're working for Maggie the Clipper's newspaper. Yep, my allotment was cut off and I just had to get a job. <laughs> well, what's the latest news? Well, did you see the evening paper? I don't read the paper myself. In fact, I don't read nothing with writing on it. <laughs> what do it say? Well, Miss Maggie has started a cleanup campaign. Yeah, what for? Well, it's the newspaper's duty to make the town clean and safe for good law-abiding citizens. Yeah, well, we only got two good law-abiding citizens in the town. What did you say? I said, we ain't got no law-abiding citizens. <laughs> Say, what do them big black words at the top of the paper say? It says the sheriff has given notice that all the gamblers, cattle rustlers, killers, and horse thieves will have to get out of town by tomorrow. Really? I wonder if the sheriff's packed yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, looky. They got you in the obituary column. Yeah? Who did I marry? <laughs> it says you died March the 16th. Really? Well, now, somebody ought to told me about that. Kind of bad walking around like David Forrester and not knowing it. I'm proud of that. That ain't it. What else, 
could say. Well, it also says, and I quote, that you are a low-down, yellow-livered mongrel, unquote. Yes. Well, at least the paper prints most of the facts, anyhow. <laughs> but I'm going to get the guy that wrote that lie. I wrote the articles, did I? But don't reach for your gun. Ooh! What happened, did I? I keep forgetting to take my gun out of the holster. <laughs> That's how I got all these holes in my shoes. Hey, Dad, I thought you'd like to know that Three Finger Charlie's on his way to wreck Maggie the Clipper's newspaper office. Come on, wonderful. We gotta go over there and arrange a funeral for old Three Finger Charlie. <laughs> hey, that's a nice horse you got there, wonderful. He's a little wild, though, ain't he? Yeah, I'm the only man who can ride him. Watch this. I thought you were the only man that could ride him. Well, sometime he forgets it's me. <laughs> well, come on, let's go. Giddy up, boy. Ooh. Howdy, Maggie. Hello, Denai. Hey, hold that breath. Maggie. It's been a long time since I've seen a beautiful woman. Really, Denai? Yeah, you don't know where I can find one, do you? Well, don't you think I'm a pretty nice dish, Denai? You built more like a platter, if you ask me. Oh, same old wisecracks and same old bow legs. Well, what's wrong with that? A lot of guys have got bow legs. Yeah, but not clean up to the ears. <laughs> Never mind that. Where's that three-fingered Charlie, that skunk without a friend in the world? I'm right behind you with a gun in your back. What do you want? I want to tell you you got a new friend. <laughs> I thought I killed you once. How could you? You only shot me in the head. Bullet's still going around looking for something to hit. You know. <laughs> Three finger, we're going to run you out of town. The people say you're a crook. Never mind the details. I don't like details myself. Now, what are you going to do? Yeah. And be careful how you answer, because you're talking to the best shot this side of Earl Flynn. <laughs> Stop reaching for those gags, or I'll blast you full of ad libs, boy. <laughs> Let's make this fair and square, huh? I'll count three and it will both grow. Okay. That sounds fair to me. It does? Yep. Of course, you don't know what I'm thinking, do you? <laughs> Dead eye. You ain't planning on cheating, are you? No, I ain't planning on cheating. Probably will, though. <laughs> you ready, three fingers? Start counting. Oh. There. Dead eye, you didn't even count. Well, that's because I know how Charlie hates details. <laughs> Now David Forrester plays one of his own uh, compositions by Schakowsky. Pop Goes the Weasel.
Chapter 106 is entitled, The Sunday Papers. The Sunday newspaper is Junior's dish. He loves the funnies, and when we find it six o'clock in the morning, everyone's asleep, except Junior, the mean way you can. Either it's time to get up or the more hen to push him out of bed again. <laughs> hey, Grandma, are you awake? Grandma, wake up, Grandma. Are you asleep? You asleep, Grandma? Not now, no. Where are you going, you asleep? I had to yell me with a head off. Junior, it's only six o'clock in the morning. Go back to sleep till well, seven. It must be seven now. No, Junior, the alarm clock is set to go off at seven. Well, maybe it overslept. The old clock's getting pretty old, you know. It's got wrinkles in his face and dishpan hands, you know. Now stop being silly and go back to bed until seven. All right. Oh, um, this is discouraging. Me whole life wasted away laying here in bed. I could have wrecked half of the house by now. <laughs> I wonder if that old clock is running. Looks like it stopped to me. And I hadn't moved a bit. Maybe I'll shake it make sure. I'll bang it on the table here. Huh? That ought to start at the chicken. Just as I thought, it's busted. What was that? That was the alarm clock going off. All over the room. Why aren't you as nice and quiet as you were when you were a little baby? I don't know. I ain't been the same since I start taking me weedy straight, you know. <laughs> Grandma. Yes, Junior? Did you start to love me? Yes, he did. Mm. What did he get for it? Thirty years. Yeah. <laughs> now, stop talking and go back to sleep. No. Oh, I just heard the boys show the Sunday papers up on the porch. Can I go down and read the funny... You know, I'm dying to see Superman meet Flash Gordon. Head on. Junior, hmm? I'd rather you concentrated on little orphan Annie. No, I don't like little orphan Annie. Why not? No blood. <laughs> Can I go read the funny, sir? All right, you win, but behave yourself. Well, don't I always behave myself? No. Well, then why do you bother asking me to do it? <laughs> Can you get out of your sleepers all right? I've been out of them for an hour. Last night I dreamed that I was trapped in a fire and I escaped through the rear exit. <laughs> hey, what shall I wear today? Uh, put on your nice Sunday suit, Junior. You mean the black one? Yes. Made of velvet? Yes. With the pearl button? Yes. The moss ate it. <laughs> well, then you'll have to put something else on. Yeah, I put on my play suit, the one with the steel knees and the asbestos lining in it. <laughs> Go read the funny papers and let me rest. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to slide down the banister so I won't wear out my shoes. Junior! What happened? You know that vase with the flowers in it? Yes. But the flowers are still okay. <laughs> How about the vase? I think it could use a broom. Junior, dear, come upstairs to your grandmother a minute. No, nah, no. Nah. I don't like that hairbrush tone in your voice. <laughs> now, I wonder where that Sunday paper is. Oh, there's Mr. Beaumont, that man from next door. Well, well, if it isn't Junior. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hunch this is going to be a wonderful day. I got a hunch you're going to change your mind, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what you carrying a stepladder for? Well, I'm looking for my paper. Oh. I believe it's on the roof. Oh. Uh, would you like to climb up this ladder and look for me? Climb up the ladder and look for you? That's a little silly, ain't it? I can see you standing right here. Well, then would you mind holding the ladder steady while I climb up to look for my paper? Now, he ought to know better than that. <laughs> okay, go ahead, boy. If your insurance company would hate me if they only knew what I'm thinking, you know. Now, 
Hold the ladder steady now. Yeah, Mr. Beaumont, don't you owe me a quarter? I, of course not. Why would I owe you a quarter, Junior? For saving your life the time you was about to fall over the stepladder. You never saved my life and you know it. Junior, stop kicking that ladder. I may fall down and break my neck. You're taking a long time to catch on, kiddo. <laughs> All right, you win. Here's your quarter. Thank you, kiddo. You should be ashamed of yourself. I am. I should have asked for a half a buck. <laughs> I'd like to get my hands on the guy that introduced your mother to your father. <laughs> Side of the roof and see if I can locate the paper. Now, don't you move that ladder. Okay. Oh, look, here comes that old fat Mr. O'Connor, the man there. <laughs> Boy, now that he's up, I won't be able to see the sun for the rest of the day. <laughs> Good morning, young man. Yeah, no. My, isn't it wonderful to be up and about so early? Isn't it delightful? Isn't it invigorating? Ah, oh, spring. Yes, you know the benches over in Griffith Park. <laughs> Let's not get sickening about it, though, you know. What did you say? I said they're paying two cents a pound for waste fat down at the meat market. Four cents. All right, four cents, millionaire. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with you? Well, I can't seem to find my paper. I wonder where it could be. Well, did you look on the front porch? You know, sometimes a boy missed the roof, you know. There's no doubt where it is. It's on the roof. Will you help me find it, Junior? Okay, we can use this step ladder over here. Get it Don't drag the ladder, Junior. It's liable to fall on you and break some of its rungs. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you sure does me, don't you, huh? Yeah. Now, uh, here, I'll take it to my house. Tell me, is Mr. Beaumont up yet? I think so. I ain't heard him fall. <laughs> now, hold the ladder while I climb up to the roof. Okay. Look at old lard boy going up that ladder. <laughs> he looks like a B-29 taking off, don't he? <laughs> hey, how much did you weigh? 300, but I hope to drop a few pounds. <laughs> I can help you drop all of it if you want to. Ah, there's my paper. Yeah, well, since you found it, you won't need the ladder anymore. Don't move that ladder. Oh, I won't. I did not. It just changed directions, was all. Well, Junior, come back here with that ladder. Oh, oh there's Mr. Beaumont up there. Uh, Junior, I'm coming down. Are you holding the ladder? Yes, I am, Mr. Beaumont. How far do I have to stretch to reach it? Oh, about halfway across the yard. <laughs> Junior, get that ladder over here. Hey, Beaumont, the kid's got me stranded on the roof. Where do you think I am? In the bathtub? <laughs> I'll give you a nickel if you'll get that ladder over here. I'll give you another clock. I had 25 cents, bid. What does the gentleman on your left offer? 35 cents. I got 35. We'll make it 40. 50 cents. 50 cents for a boy. If I can hold out, I'll be a millionaire. I'm on 50. I got 50 out of my bid, so I hit the cents. Well, that's all right. Junior, you're getting a nickel. 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 Junior, uh -oh. you help those men down to Nero, or I'll give you the flipping of your life. Show to that lady with the hairbrush. <laughs> back with you next Tuesday at this same time. Red Skelton, David Forrester and his orchestra, Anita Ellis, Verna Felton, Gigi Pearson, Pat McGeehan, and yours truly, Rod O'Connor. Until next Tuesday, then. This is Red Skelton saying goodbye now and thanks for listening. And remember, don't react to words because words are seeds. And they'll grow from a word into a sentence and into a sentence into a paragraph and from a paragraph into a fabulous story. And there's enough dirt in each man's mind to make things grow. Good night. Brown and Williamson invite you to other good listening throughout the week. Here are the Raleigh Room starring Hildegard tomorrow night and People Are Funny with Art Linkletter Friday night and return with Red Skelton next Tuesday. Red Skelton is heard on this program through the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor. Red Skelton is brought to you by the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.